Jen. Hi, I'm Marie. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Holly. Hey guys, we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everyone, happy, happy, happy Wednesday and thank you so much for joining us here. You have landed on our live show and if you are here with us live, you'll see everyone's posting in the chat box to the left or that would be the right if you're watching, saying hi and where you're from. We hope you guys will do that too. If you're watching the playback, hey, say hi and do the same thing. We have a fun show for you today. We are going to needle felt fur, long fur, short fur, smooth fur, scruffy or fluffy fur. It's going to be a <laughs> lot of fun. But before we jump into that, we all want to say a huge thank you to everybody who participated in our Koala Mates fundraiser. We, as a company, decided that we wanted to raise money for the bushfires in Australia and our community got involved. We thank you all so much. Now, our goal was to sell, we, we set an internal goal of fundraiser that we wanted to, um, we made a kit for the Koala Mates and we'll share a little snapshot of those tutorials soon, uh, later in the broadcast. And we asked our community if they wanted to participate by doing two free tutorials for needle felt and koala pins or magnets. And our goal was to send out 150 kits, giving away 100% of the proceeds to WWF, which is World Wildlife Fund in Australia. We met that goal inside of two weeks and beyond. So we, <laughs> we made our donation yesterday. This is the thank you email. And we just wanna say thank you to all of you for participating. Going forward, we will still give a portion of the proceeds of that kit to WWF Australia, but we've made our first donation. You have made the first donation and we just wanna thank you all so much for participating in that. We are so, so awesome. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, we have a fun show for you today, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to say hi to a few people. The fairies are going to do a couple of show and tells to support some items that may be of interest for today's show, and then we're just going to jump right into it. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for being here, y'all. Let's say a quick hello to a few folks, and thank you all so much for being here. Now I saw uh, a friend, let's see, I saw Shell is in Edinburgh, Scotland. I saw someone in uh, Arizona. I saw someone in Egypt, which is just amazing. Who do you got over there, Anne? I've got Karen in Sweden, Lisa in Canada. Thank you all so much for being here. I know people are still joining the show. We're gonna have a fun broadcast today. But the first thing we have, we're gonna share a couple of our fibers so that you can see them up close and personal. And they're definitely gonna to relate to what we're doing on the show here today. So first up is Fairy Hannah. Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? So I'm showing you another one of our great fun studio packs. This one's gonna be the MC1 Earth Tone Studio Pack. So this is a, a great fiber. We actually manufacture it ourselves. Um, all U.S. farmers are involved, which I think is pretty special. So with this fiber, it's going to be a little bit coarser than some of our other fibers. It's got a micron count of about 25, and it is a, a short, crimpy fiber. So on this uh, round of studio packs, we have a... Um, a variety of colors that can vary from round to round. So in this one, we've got dark chocolate, cafe au lait, clay, oatmeal, pumpkin spice, and vintage brown. So there's going to be fun little colors to do any kind of animals or fur with. And I think next we got Miss Holly showing you some other fibers. Thank you. Hi, so I am going to be showing you the New Zealand Coriadale African Safari Studio Pack. And it's got, um, its micron count is, ranges between 27 and 34. It's a longer, it's a sliver, so it's got a longer staple length. Um, I think it was like two and a half to four inches of staple length, five inches? Four. four. Okay, four. <laughs> um, and in this pack we get smoke, butterscotch, black, cocoa, um, toffee and white so it's perfect because it's longer it's a little bit coarser so you can get a really good realistic looking animal fur with the New Zealand Corydale and now we have Fairy Ann hey, hi friends today we wanted to share with you some our merino top feeling earthy studio pack the feeling earthy studio pack comes with colors 
in our merino top that are 19 and a half micron. It's a fine fiber. Staple length is about three inches. And the Feeling Earthy pack comes with the following colors. Saffron, burnt orange, milk chocolate, sand dollar, mushroom, and down here we have coffee bean. So nice. Everyone's loving all of these color assortments and they love the names. Right? <laughs> so fun. Thank you. Anna. Next we have Miss Kayla. Yay! Happy for Kayla's corny corner. Hi everybody. I am sharing my corny sense of humor today and telling a joke. So um, let me see now. I'm going to forget the joke. What kind of bear likes to go out in the rain? A drizzly bear. <laughs> <laughs> for a very punny joke. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here and joining in today. Um, I am Marie. You have just met the Magical Fairies. If this is your first time joining us, you can do a hashtag I'm new in the chat window and if you're watching down below, so we have been sharing links in the chat window. We're also going to share links in the description. So if you're watching the playback, we're going to share links to any of the resources we mentioned today, including the fibers we just shared. And now today we are doing long, short, medium length fur, fluffy fur, flat fur, whatever it is. My goal is to help you get over the hurdle, get rid of any fears or concerns about making your sculptures furry, and I'm going to give you a couple of tools or techniques that you can use to plan out your furriness in your felted animals. So I'm going to share with you a few of the things um, I brought with you today. And uh, if you're not familiar, if you missed our last shows, we needle felted uh, koala mates. This is the koala mate we made in the first show. Um, and this, oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. This is the koala mates we made in the first show. And then I'm wearing a pin. This is a, what we made in the second show. These are free tutorials for the koala mates fundraiser that I mentioned to you. And we do have a kit for these. The kits will make a couple. Um, just so, just so if you miss those, we've popped up the thumbnails there so you can see them. We're also going to share the links in the chat box and we'll post them in the description in the replay so that if you're looking for those videos you can find them. Now just one more um, video I want to mention and I didn't bring my thumbnail for that but we're going to be working with some of the fibers that the gals mentioned to you and if you are not comfortable with blending fibers to get a particular color we're going to do a little bit of that today but we have a video for it for blending fibers where we printed out a reference image and um, blended some color ways to give you ideas about how you might do the same for your animals. You know what we really want to do is encourage you to just go for it and try something, be willing to get it wrong and be willing to get it right because belting should be fun. And so today we have some um, tips and techniques for you that will hopefully make furring out your critters fun as well. So I'm going to turn down here and show you my super messy workstation. Hey, if you're in our Facebook group, um, I would like you to put hashtag BFF, LFBFF, hashtag LFBFF in the chat box and maybe down below. My husband shared a picture this weekend of my me working, like, and how messy my workstation was. This is tidy by comparison, <laughs> I promise. Okay, so I brought a couple of things today, and the first one is, this is the koala face. It's actually the one that we made together. Uh, last week and I furred him out. So I'm going to be sharing that technique with you today and I fluffed up his ears a little bit better which we did show on the video but I just needed to go back and add more. Now I've given my koala kind of a scruffy face um, which seems kind of fitting and this guy on the back of him, I want to see if I can show you that he has a very kind of thick Kind of a thick fur. If I brush my hand across it, it should look very fluffy and almost natural. And that's what we're going to look at today. 
So I just want to show you a couple of the guys on my table before we jump right into it. This guy is a um, rats of unusual size. What, how, what are they? R-O-U-S. R-O-U-S. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what he is. This is just some, some little uh, critter that I made years ago. But the reason I wanted to show him to you is what's different about him is his fur or hair is made with merino top. And what happens as a result, if you work with a really fine fiber as opposed to a fiber that's a little more coarse, so this is a 19 micron and this is about the 27 or 30 micron that Holly was mentioning, this one can be handled and roughed up and is not going to necessarily felt on you. Whereas this guy, he gets handled in the shop all the time and his fur just gets matted and flattened. So if your pieces are going to be handled a lot, we're going to encourage you to work with fibers that are a little more coarse or a blend of fibers coarse and fine together to achieve to so that they don't get so easily matted and flattened okay cool so what I'd like to know before we get started is if you can master the furry stuff what would you make what would you felt next if you could master the furry stuff and before we jump into furring stuff out I want to introduce you to my friends the fur bits and so the fur bits are my technique these are two of them and here's one who doesn't have eyes yet the fur bits are my technique for sharing with you ways to plan out fur or spots or stripes this guy has stripes all the way around for whatever animal or critter you're working on without feeling threatened by ruining your perfect sculpture so you can make these little practice pads if you will and we're gonna do that a little bit today and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see more closely what we're doing but you can make little plastic 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 practice pads, mounds, and domes to work out your fur and learn how to apply the fur and how to cut the fur. So I call these guys the fur bits and I hope to make some more. But you can keep them in your stash and reference the fibers you use, the blends that you made to create a, spe a specific colorway like this guy. Um, yeah, it's kind of just a non-threatening way to practice working with fur and even plan out for your sculptures. Okay, so I'm going to look for your questions as we work together, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. So why don't we start with just looking at long fur, and this furry guy is a great example of really a long, kind of a long and fluffy fur, and his fur is New Zealand Corydale. If I bend him around, you can see like how thick that coat is and how lush it is. Maybe you're needle felting a cat or a dog and you wanted to have a really long coat. We're going to look today at how to apply fibers to get achieve a certain density and then also how to cut them. The main tools are felting needles and I'm going to work a lot with coarse needles, maybe a 36 triangle or a 38 if you're more comfortable with that. Um, and some fine sharp scissors and an eyebrow comb. A metal eyebrow comb has just been awesome for combing out, combing out the fibers, fluffing them around, and you know checking the thickness and the lushness as you're working. So getting them to go where you want to go. All right. And I am going to look over here for any questions y'all have. Just post them. What we do is your name goes into a hat. And at the end, we draw names and give away prizes for everybody who helped contribute in the conversation. Lots and lots of fun. So, uh, Miss North Shore said, is this tutorial only on long fur for 3D? I need help with 2D long fur. This would be almost like, so if you want it totally flat, that's different. This would be, today's tutorial is more for 3D, meaning the fur would be sticking up and not just appearing um, long, if you know what I mean. How do you stop the fur getting too messed up by handling it once the animal is made? That was from Carol. And Carol, I think we spoke a little bit to that with saying, um, you know, choose a fiber that's not going to felt on you. And quickly, I'm going to blend some fibers so y'all can see um, an example of creating a little colorway here. I'm going to put some darks. I, I used um, butterscotch in New Zealand Corydale, white or natural light is fine, and then natural dark. 
and I'm just going to blend these together to kind of get a little colorway going. So if you want to avoid them from getting messed up, the first thing is don't let kids play with it. <laughs> you know, put it up on the shelf like a piece of art if you're concerned about that. Um, and then the next thing to be would be to use more coarse fibers rather than super fine fibers. The fine fibers are going to mat. And you can also comb it out, you know, if it gets kind of worked. Now we are going to be doing um, something that's a little more 2D in a couple of weeks with long fur, but it won't be um, the illusion of long fur. We'll apply fur to something that's 2D. Um, at least that's my plan. Okay. So what were, Starlet says, what were the long staple fibers recommended for the coarse hair like the koala? Starlet, that is the New Zealand Coriadale. So on these koala bears, we use the New Zealand Coriadale medium right here. And we're going to work with that in just a moment. And I also blend that with the dark. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So the first thing I want to do is apply fur. I'm going to apply fur to this little thing right here. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit closer so that you all can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to get these guys out of the way. And I want to look at two different ways you can apply fur to a piece. So this is what I would call fluffy. It's like a medium density. It's not sparse and it's not super dense. It's fluffy. And then this would be more like a hair or a short coat, so hair, H-A-I-R, or a short coat dog, or cat, or horse, or something. Um, so it's the same blend applied two different ways, and that's what we're going to look at right now. So first let's look at the fluffy stuff. Um, what I like to do is get my fiber blend, and blend enough that you can make a little headway. I probably should have pre-blended more. And I'm going to divide it into some smaller bits here and we're gonna cut it. Oh I know some people are gasping already. So I'm only cutting this about I want to say it's like an inch and a half. If you look at it next to my finger it goes from the tip of my finger to my knuckle. Just play with that for yourself and find what what works for you. This is gonna get hair all over your foam or whatever so sometimes I put down fabric for those of you who saw that picture my husband posted of me working uh, I, I had the really busy fabric underneath and that's why. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just start right here on this end and I'm going to apply the fur. We're going to apply the fluffy fur first and I'm going to apply it um, by needle felting into the fold. So you can find where the middle of that fiber is and we're just going to needle felt a line into your piece. A couple of tips. It really is going to help if your piece, your base, is semi-firm so that when you poke this coarse needle into it, it doesn't misshape. That's especially important when you're working on something like this face. You don't want the face to misshape because it wasn't dense enough in the first place to handle being um, having that fur applied. So density is going to be your friend. And the second thing is, use, go ahead and use a coarse needle so that you can firmly anchor those fibers in. Now I'm not making these overly thick across, it's really just like a single, a single layer. I'm going to poke it in, and you could also use your, your 38, you might try a 38 star or spiral if you're more comfortable with that. And I'm going to fold these fibers up, and right here I'm just going to poke that right along that length. And then I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to poke right along that length. Now, if you want this to be super dense, very, very dense, like on this guy, like really dense, then we'll leave almost no space between the rows. But if you want it to be, you know, a little more loose or a little more fluffy, you can leave a small space between the two rows. That space is about, hmm, maybe the thickness of a pencil. Play with it. You can do, you know, make that bigger or smaller as you wish. So now I'm going to just put another row right here and I'm going to leave a little space. Sometimes I do put something down. You can also use your finger, like put your finger in place so you can feel where it's going and just poke right again. You're poking right into the middle. Right into the middle. 
this would be great for doing a, a medium length hair dog or doing a cat. Um, but it can even be for something shorter because we'll trim it and I'll show you. Um, you can change the length by trimming it and you can trim it as you go or you can trim it at the end. It's really up to you. Sometimes I like to do a specific area and then trim that area. Just that way I feel more comfortable treating everything uniform. Okay, I'm going to try and see some of your questions. Someone says, I came into, Michelle says, I came into a bunch of alpaca fiber. Can it be used for this? Absolutely, yes, Michelle. This right here in my little stash, this is alpaca. And I blend this in. Uh, I blend this in actually on this one here. I did include alpaca for a little more of a tan. This is just a natural colored alpaca. So absolutely, yes. This is for your long-haired staple. It doesn't matter whether it's fine or not fine. Um, Brenda said, is, is it okay to cut any type of wool? Sure, Brenda, go ahead and give it a cut. See how it feels. Sherry says, can you combine merino with New Zealand and other fibers, etc.?" Absolutely, Sherry. This little fur ball right here is New Zealand and merino together. I wanted both. Some I wanted the colors and other I didn't want it to be too flattened. So he is a blend of New Zealand and merino top together. Um, okay, so now remember we want to um, go under here and needle felt both sides. You can use a skewer, you can use some kind of little divider so you can see where all the fibers are going, whatever works for you. Just remember to needle felt both sides there, just like that. And we're going to fold it back down and needle felt that. Okay, so now this is this and all you have to do is cut it to the length you want. You can leave it long if you want or you can just trim it and even though we left a little opening in there when you fluff it or comb it notice that that doesn't show. You don't you would have to peel these back to see that there is that space in between where we didn't cover the base and that's totally okay so you can just fluff this up especially if you want it to be long um, and no one's going to know that there's that gap under there and it'll make it look a little more fluffy as opposed to just super super dense this little guy is an example there's like no space left in him and the fiber in there is just super super dense so maybe a really woolly bear or something like that would be good or a super fluffy furball dog or cat would be perfect for applying this really dense and then not cutting it too much. This is a good, these fibers are a good inch long and so I wanted him to just kind of be buried in all of that. Um, but let's look at how you apply the short fiber, like this side, if you want to do a coat on a horse um, and this stuff is a little, some of the stuff in here is a little wiry. It's a little more wiry on this one because I did use the alpaca. You'll notice that on the alpaca, um, you're going to have something that's really like a guard hair and it sticks out. It's like a hair and you see it there. So you may want to trim those out or clean them up. Now with doing the short fiber, we're going to layer it and needle felt it without the fold. And let me just show you how to do that and I'll pull up a couple of questions here. I'm sorry I can't, I'm not seeing them all. There's so many of you with such great, great, great questions. Um, Linda Reeder says, what can you use besides an eyebrow comb? You know, just try a fine comb. Try like a rat tail comb, something that your um, hairdresser would have. You might have a rat tail comb. I meant to bring mine and I didn't, but it does help if the um, the comb can get can grab onto these fibers and an eyebrow comb. Uh, and I'm going to try and, and pick these up for us, but y'all can you know y'all can pick them up at probably at the drugstore or whatever. It's just got a nice little set of metal teeth, and I like this one because it folds closed. Um, re just really great for grabbing on to these little fibers. But this is a great reason to needle felt your fibers into your piece firmly because you want it really to grab into the base. If it's loose, then when you go to comb, it's all just going to come out. So you will get some shedding or some loss, but you don't want to pluck it out in great big amounts. 
Okay, so all I'm doing is here, I'm just laying this fiber down and I am needle felting in only one end and leaving the other end loose. This is how you're going to get a short coat or a smooth coat. Now you might have variation within your coat, so you might have, um, you know, it might go from light to dark or whatever, and so just pre-blend all your fibers first so that as you're putting them on, um, you can vary that pattern as you go forward. And now all I'm doing is starting the next one up. It's okay that they overlap even more than you want because you can go back and trim. But you can also trim to the exact right length that you want before you apply it to your piece, whatever you're more comfortable with. And I'm going to switch to another color, color palette and show you um, a, a little more just so you can see you know, from a different example. Let's just finish out this little row here. And thank you all for your questions. Thank you for getting this going. Karen says, can this be used on doll heads? Absolutely, Karen. You can use this to apply hair on a doll. We, we do have a complete doll tutorial series, um, and there is a, a section there on heads and hair. But yes, you can use this for beards, for mustaches. Uh, Linda says, does the wool hold in well? Could you pull it out? You know, Linda, if you really wanted to on, on some pieces, you probably could. But again, if your base is firm, um, then it would take real effort to pull it out. I would just say they're not toys, so definitely keep that in mind. Okay, I've got major fur stuff happening over here. And to trim, you can also comb up. You know, you can comb your, comb your hair up and trim it down and you can trim each layer if you want. So I'm just going to trim this all. Just kind of like your hairdresser would do. And you can trim each layer if you want to. So once you have one layer done, you can trim the next layer. Sorry, I'm trying to stay on camera here. And once you've trimmed it to more the length you like, you can even tack it down a little bit on your piece and get everything just laying down a little bit better. So it doesn't have to all stick up. But you can comb it down onto your piece and leave it be a little more like hair, like on this guy. All I did was start here and then build the layers up. And that's what I like to do is I like to start at the base and build up. But not everybody does that. Some people are going to start at what would be, you know, the neck of an animal and build their way down. I tend to put this layer on and then this layer on and then this layer on so that there's a constant overlapping of layers and the, the end of the layer is always loose. That's just the way I like to do it. So Linda asked, can you pull that out? I can tell you that like I'm holding on to this little guy and that fiber's not coming out because I anchored it on there well. And so if this, this uh, part right here, he is actually made a little more like the fluffy end that we did and trimmed really, really close. So let's look at that. I brought in my Joey, who's never had fur, uh, where is he? Right here. Okay, I brought in my Joey, I'll zoom out a little bit, who has never had fur because mostly I haven't taken the time to give him fur. <laughs> but, oh, he's missing an eye too. Uh, I've not taken the time to give him fur because you really have to want it, you know, to apply fur to a critter like this. It really does take some time. So, you know, make sure you have enough fiber before you start uh, because colorways can shift just like with yarns. And go plan to take your time. Don't rush. Don't plunk down just a great big old amount of wool on top of your guy. Um, give, him some, give him some love and attention so that he will come out nice like you want him. Now this little haunch here, this leg, uh, I have begun applying fiber to, and we are using the New Zealand Coriadale Medium, but I'm blending the medium, see how light it is? Uh, these are natural undyed colors, so they're going to vary from harvest to harvest, and you may need to blend fibers to get the colorway that you're wanting. So just as an example, I always start with like a 50-50 meaning just two colors usually, and then I'll add colors to it from there. 
and I'm going to blend these up real fast and look for any questions that you have. You all have such good questions and I know um, I know that I'm missing all of them. So maybe um, Anne, tell me some a good question or two that I've missed while I've been trying to needle felt that you would like me to tackle. Marlene asks, how do you determine how much fiber to pull in for a project? Uh, Marlene says, how do you determine how much fiber to pull in? Marlene, that's a great question, but I would say if you make a sample, a furbit sample, you'll probably get an idea of how much that weighs. So if you make yourself a little furbits patch like this, weigh the patch or the mound before you start applying fiber, apply your top coat or fiber, whatever, whatever that's going to look like, and then weigh it again. And at least you'll get an idea of weight. So making samples is something we talk about all the time in wet felting, and we don't talk about it a lot in needle felting. But what I've noticed is I think that people tend to be a little bit shy about applying fur, and I don't know if it's a time or I don't know if it's an intimidation. And so for today, Today's example, I wanted to give you something that would maybe help you get over that concern, not feel so intimidated about applying fiber. Okay. Nicole asks, is it always better to apply long fur from top down or from bottom to top? Um, Nicole, thank you for that question. So I think I just spoke about that and my preference is to go from top to bottom, but I know other felt makers who will go top to bottom. That's just the way I do it. One thing's for sure, it doesn't matter which way you go, like if you're doing it from say top to bottom, when you do this layer, let me see if I can peel back a layer and I'll show you what's under here. When you do a layer, you can keep that layer out of the way. Um, you could pin it out of the way. Uh, sometimes I use those T-Tac pins, which I don't have any here. But you can pin it back and then put the next layer on and pin it back like this, you know. And see how the, about space is in there? There's about a finger or maybe about a pencil thickness of space in there. So you can pin it out of the way. But for me, it helps me see the length if I go bottom to top. And that's just a personal preference. Okay. Clean asks, do you comb all the fiber up and then trim it? Oh, I think that's totally up to you. That's just kind of what I do because um, in this case, I'm wanting it to be furry but not necessarily long. And that way I can see all that volume sticking up. So let's do a row here on my little kangaroo just so you can see. There's no big mystery to what I'm doing here compared to what I did there. And then we're going to trim it. Now kangaroos, um, I originally wasn't going to put fur on him. Kangaroos seem to have like a short coat, um, like kind of a short furry coat. And this is faux fur, y'all, to anyone watching. We don't, we don't encourage the fur trade by any means. This is faux fur, felted faux fur. Um, and I'd rather see kangaroos hopping <laughs> than to see a, any kangaroo fur off the kangaroo. All right, I'm just going to trim a few pieces here so that I have it. And I just find it easier to trim it in a length that I can work with. And then sometimes I just take off that tail end if I don't need it. Okay, I'm going to apply just another row of fur. So somebody feed us a question while I do that here. Again, needle felting in the middle and you overlap some. So you always want that fiber to overlap the previous, the previous layer. And then when you needle felt it in, you're going to lose a little bit. And if you feel like you don't like um, the position while you're still working on it, well then just pluck it out. It's not too late to pluck it out right now if you feel like it's not in the best position. Do you ever use a reverse needle to make the fur? Well this, um, the thing about a reverse needle, and we try and tackle this often, is the reverse needle is going to pull out whatever's on the inside. This guy is made with core wool on the inside. Um, so too much plucking with a reverse needle is just going to pull that white core wool out. However, on his coat, if you look at it um, here, I know it's going to be hard to see that it's just a little bit nubby. I went over the surface lightly with a reverse needle when I first made him because I wanted him to look 
a little scruffy and not completely smooth. But just keep in mind that when you pull the reverse needle out, it's going to pull whatever's underneath out. And it doesn't do a great job of like, it's not going to do this for you. It's not going to make it look like fur. It can make something look a little fuzzy or a little fluffy if you put a longer fiber underneath, but it's not going to give you a true furred appearance. Mm -hmm. Teresa asks, how do you keep your hands from mashing the fur as you are felting the whole animal? Um, Teresa asked, how do I keep my hands from mashing the fur and maybe uh, like felting the fur? Well, I'm using fibers that aren't really going to felt. I mean, I'm using fibers that can handle it. You can see how much handling they can, ha they can take. If you have something that's too fine, well then yeah, it's going to mat up on you. So you might just think about that um, and handle it. If you're using a really fine like merino top or something, Handle it delicately and anchor it in there well enough so that you can comb it out um, before you ship it off to its next station. Okay, so we have big bushy leg here and let's trim him. And you know what, I'm not worried about getting it wrong. Um, and I'm just going to start first by uh, seeing these bits. I'll try and give you my horizon view. See these bits that are sticking out the, the tallest? If you pull all these fibers out this way or comb them out, if you have your comb, then you can just trim it, start trimming it there, and then get braver and braver as you take more and more fiber off. I want this guy to have kind of a short coat, so I'm going to just trim in there and make all of those level. And I'm just going to trim it off. Like I said, I'm not worried about getting it wrong because this is my, all, almost all of my pieces are like teaching, teaching pieces and I feel like you can learn from it. But I did do smaller heads first and doing the smaller heads um, really gave me the idea to do something like uh, like the fur bits and practice because you can practice your spots and stripes and your color blends on little things on little things like this and decide how, how dense do you want to put the fiber on in the first place. So I, I just really want to encourage you to get brave by making samples. Now I think that looks from my point of view maybe still a little bit bushy. So I just pause there and now I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. Between your oh, and the long thank fur. you for asking that, Diane. Um, Diane who? Diane Apsey. Diane, great question, and thank you for asking that because I have things queued up to tell you, and then I forget that I have them queued up to tell you. So I wanted to um, absolutely make that point today that you do not have to, but it will depend on probably the density of the fur that you apply. So sometimes you might want to apply the color underneath that you want to do in the fur on top and that's going to be your guide. That might especially be the case if you're doing spots and stripes so that you feel like you have a really good um, guide of your transition. But this guy right here is white underneath. There is no solid color, it's just core wool underneath. And you can't tell as I'm combing it that there's core wool underneath and that's because I applied that fiber fairly densely. So you do not have to cover it with a color and this guy is not covered, colored with a color either. He's just white underneath um, and I cover the bottom with the, this matching color. So definitely it's not required to do that but you may feel a little safer um, and again, just try it out on your samples. So check out this, you know, furry little leg that we have going and you can tre keep trimming it if you want it to be shorter. It just depends on how um, fluffy you need that fur to be. So let me just, I'm going to trim off just a micro amount more, mostly around these haunches, around his leg. Linda asks, which wool do you prefer to use for animal fur? Merino top or New Zealand or both? Yeah, that's, who asked that question? Linda here. Linda asks, which fiber do I prefer? And the answer to that would be in a lar largely in the showing tells that we did in the beginning. And that is, we really want to encourage you, I'm going to encourage you to use a fiber that is a little more coarse so that it doesn't felt on you. And so it'll have a little more of that fiber appearance. So I brought in 
a sculpture of my own, uh, this one that I shared with you, and I tell you that like while it's a pretty color, and this is a this is an example right here of the coat kind of combed out a little bit. I was combing it out last night, but right up here at the neck, it's just matted and flat, and it doesn't even look like like you applied a long fur after a while because it just gets compressed and matted and so I would say if you plan on your piece being handled to definitely incorporate some coarser fibers so that they're gonna have uh, some durability to them and can be handled a little bit because everybody wants to touch them so that's my encouragement is go ahead and blend in some coarser fibers play with um, your spacing of your layers so that you see how fluffy and dense you want your piece to be. So let's look at um, this little guy here for a second. He's a combination of the two methods I just showed you. The only difference is I have cut his fiber very, very short. So um, on the snout right here, like right on his nose, I've just applied a single layer um, the fiber a single layer and I can do a little bit of that or we can do uh, something like this guy the spots something where you play with making your own little fur bits piece so I'm gonna look for some of your questions here someone says did you trim it closer to put on the eyes or not to put so and this guy this guy was made just like him so the eyes and everything were in place before I added the fur and then I just put the fur right on top so while I'm waiting, I'll just wait for a few more questions to come in and why don't I just apply, I'll apply some of this lighter colored fur right on top of him so you can see what I mean. And I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm not able to read as fast as you all are giving me the questions, but so Kathy Fald says, can you make the longer coats with MC1? And Kathy, um, MC1 is a short fiber, so for those of you who don't know, uh, this is an example of our MC1 willow that we made our koalas with. This little guy's uh, fur is this color, um, which is very close to the New Zealand natural, but the staple length is tiny. It's fine. It is a, it's a fine 25 microns, so it's not super fine, but it's definitely finer than New Zealand Corydale. So this is not going to give you a long coat. It's a little short staple length, which is going to needle felt very smoothly. It's going to blend beautifully uh, to create some new colorways. It's great, great, great for 2D needle felting too, because you can get super detailed with it. Um, but it's not going to give you a long, a long coat because it is a short staple length. So think about the staple length, read about the staple length of the fiber you buy um, before you choose it. That's really important. Someone says, would you put in the spots and then go back and fill it in? And my answer to that is I would build the spots and the fill in at the same time, probably. But, it, you know, that's probably, that's up to you. Like on this guy, I build the center of the spot and then the ring of the spot and then build around. So I would, if I were doing spots, then I would um, build them gradually. So here I'm going to cut this piece of fiber in half and I'm going to make it super duper short. So if you're doing something like the muzzle here, you're going to want to look at the direction of the fiber on your animal. How is it going? Notice this guy. I mean, it's not going to go straight down per se. You're going to notice that the fiber changes direction on the animal as you apply it. So study images of your animal as you're working on it and pay attention to that fiber direction. So even right here in the snout, you can just needle felt that right in. Now, if you're having a challenge getting anything to stick, you can try and put a little layer of, you know, MC1 over the top, but ideally your base is just strong enough that it can take the application of fiber. So I do like to start at the bottom, but I want to show you just right here, you can apply the fiber right up close and right, a, right around where you already have features in place, just layer one on top of the other um, and then you can trim it back afterwards, like wherever you don't want it or if it's going over into the eyes, you can trim it back. Um, Patricia says, I think alpaca does not felt well and so would it be good to mix? 
alpaca, silk fiber, or camel, I've read for cat fur. You know, I would say to play with it. Silk fiber seems like it would, you know, make a nice sheen, but it's not, the alpaca is going to be much more durable. And I would mix it with New Zealand Corydale myself, or a Shetland, or something like that. Alpaca does, you can out needle felt the alpaca well, um, but like I said, it has some guard hairs in it. Um, so it tend, it can tend to look, or some of it will, it might tend to look a little wiry. Now notice underneath here, if I want to keep going down this face and if I, um, if I want it to be fluffy, then now's the time to kind of fold it and needle felt in the middle. So you can do both on the same structure or on the same sculpture. So you can lay it flat where you want it to be very, very thin, like right there on the nose. But if you want it to start it getting fuzzy on the face, then needle felt in the fold like you did before. And when you, when you fold it over and you needle felt on each of the two sides, you're just anchoring it in more. And you're going to start to build that up so you can trim it off. And that's how this guy, this guy and this guy are made, just by building the same layers like we did on the leg of our kangaroo. Someone says, let's see, Claire says, would you post on the Facebook page some photos of the different practice fur bits that you made? I'd like to be able to look at them while I'm practicing. Um, sure, yeah, I'll post, I'll post pictures of these guys. I've only made a couple of these. How firm is your piece? I am squeezing right now this head with all the strength I have in my hand, like no faking. I am squeezing that thing as hard as I can. He is really, really firm, and I am squeezing him as hard as I can, and he's not flattening. So I would say make your pieces firm so that they really, really hold up. I mean, I could squish them, you know, in the fullness of my hand, but make them firm so that they really, really hold up. So let's see what we've looked at here, because it might not seem like we've done a lot, but we have. We've looked at, um, we've looked at applying fur to your pieces. Did I lose my piece? I lost my fur bits piece. Um, we looked at applying um, the short fur and we blended a little bit. So with short fur, you can just layer one on top of the other. And we looked at applying the fluffy fur. If you want it to be fluffy and somewhat loose, then leave a little gap in between your two layers. And I'll dig through and find this for you. It's interesting because it just hides itself. And so that leaves a gap not even as thick as my finger, not even as thick as a pencil. It's like a quarter of an inch or less uh, in between. And um, why don't I grab, let's see if I have a ruler right here. here. So the gap in between these two layers right here is just about a quarter of an inch in between those two layers. And on someone like this guy, I left no gap. No gap at all. Like if you dig under here, you're not going to find any gap. So I just butted each row right on top of the other. So this is an example of one row right on top of the other in a short coat. I've just cut it very, very short. Whereas this guy is an example of the same density, leaving no space in between the rows. You can't even find them in there, but not cutting it all that short. And he also has a transition going from a solid to a blended, a solid one to blended, these two, these two blended together, the medium and the dark blended together. So you can plan transitions in your coat um, this little guy is this cluster of fibers right here, and this is New Zealand, New Zealand, Merino, Merino. So a 19 micron and like a 27 micron, completely different. Um, and this colorway here is a blend of Merino and New Zealand. And um, this, this guy probably, parts of him, like the purple parts is 100% merino and it probably would felt over time if somebody, you know, just touched him. If he was handled and played with all the time, he probably would felt. But um, this was really just an example of encourage you to try spots and to try stripes in your plan. And there was no uh, solid wool underneath, it was just putting it on. 
So one more thing I want to show you in these examples is my little bird. And I do want to do uh, make this chickadee with you this year. I hope that we can make time for that. But if you do a bird with fiber on top, you can follow a lot of these same principles. Where you want the chest to be a little more fluffy and a little more full, then fold your fibers. Now this guy is merino top, and I uh, did not use New Zealand Coriadale on him. I think that we would probably all agree this feels like something you might feel a little more free to handle and paw and pick up and this guy feels a little more delicate so if you will have a sculpture that's going to be a little more delicate more likely to sit up on a shelf or behind glass or something then you can just use the merino top um, because if it won't be handled it's less likely to felt but uh, where you want it fluffy fold the fibers where you want it very smooth and very close then cut your fibers and stack them and um, and that's all we've done here. I mean, we made the, the feathers separate and the beak and the beak and the feet are clay and the eyes are glass like we've been working with, but it is the same principles as with my little fur bits. A close coat, a fluffy, and this is a fluffy um, medium density coat, not super close. Cool. What final questions do you have that I can answer? And really my goal today, hopefully, is just to get you to try and fur out something that you've made or to make your own little fur bits sample, whether they have eyes or no eyes, um, but to just try and practice creating some long fur on your critters. Um, Denise says, these guys' eyes are awesome. Are they made from clay? I don't know what you're talking about, the, the fur bits. Oh, the fur bits, no, those are just wool. I was a Sesame Street fan, so I just see Muppets everywhere. They felt, like they felt Muppety to me, but those, those are just wool. Um, let's see. What's, I saw a question that I wanted to tackle. So someone says, wondering if you could use hairspray on your wool long fur project. I can't answer that because I don't use hairspray. I wouldn't use hairspray. I know some people do, but I wouldn't use it myself. It's just not something that lives in my house. Um, someone says, where do you get the MC1 batting? Thank you, Let's Clay with Max, for that question. MC1 batting is a signature Living Felt fiber, so you always get it from us at Living Felt. This is our fiber. It comes in over 90 colors. Uh, I've, one of the gals shared it in the beginning. Um, Hannah did. Um, it's all U.S. sheep, from U.S. farms, um, dyed here in the States, but it's our signature fiber, so we're where you get it. Um, someone says, do you put in the eyes after you do the fur? You certainly could. I did on my fur bits. With my other guys, I just added the fur after. A couple of more. Uh, Jane Hall says, what do you do with the cut off fiber? I hate to throw it away. So you get all of these little bits. You can make, um, I call, you can make like kitchen sink bats or trash bats. You can use them for core. You can also put these little bits out for critters and the birds in your yard and they're going to put, um, good, put it to good use. I'm trying to tackle as many questions as I can before we go. Someone says, how tall is Joey? Joey is, oh, to the top of his ears, 11 and a half inches to the top of his head, 10. He's not very big. Um, how long is the koala kit going to be available? Diane, thank you for that question. Probably a long, long time. We love the koala kit. Um, Jane Hall asked, can we have a tutorial on making clay beaks and feet? Yes, that is my plan. They might not be all at the same time, but I do want to do that. BJ, do you follow the contours of your critter for the rose as you apply the fur layers? I do, BJ. I'm not the best with realism. So some of you on, the, on here are just way, way better at realism than I am. For me, it's not my forte. So I would say study the picture and look at the fur. But even if you have a dog or a cat at home, notice the way, the direction that their fur is going on their body as you apply the fur because that's going to make it look more natural if you kind of follow as you go along. And I know I saw a question and I just can't um, seem to find it. Allie says, do you have a kit for the bird? Not yet, Ali. Um, trying to whittle that down. I didn't. When I make something just for myself, sometimes I don't pay attention to everything that I put into it, and then I have to um, simplify it later. So we definitely are going to think about that. Um, any questions you have, Anne, that you want me to answer before we go? Let's see. Judy asks, Marie, would you use the same instructions to make wavy fur? 
Oh, for wavy fur, you know, that's a great question. And I would say for wavy fur, that's when you want to find some locks. See if you can find locks that are in the colorway. I know it's a little more of a challenge and we don't have a huge supply of natural dyed locks. In truth, what happens is we always sell out. But so if you really want wavy fur, one thing you can do is to buy locks that have kind of the wave or the natural color that you want. And another would be to maybe consider making your own ringlets and see if you can cut those. So um, someone, and I don't know who, shared in our Facebook group this week their steaming of their ringlets, and a few people have shared this over time, but they take a fiber, and I don't seem to have a skewer. Let me see if I have a pen. Um, so a skewer or a pencil or like a um, uh, kebab skewer, if you take your fibers and maybe make your, maybe make your blend, and then you twist them around something round and then you can steam them this way. Now some people do use hairspray after they make these, but if you steam them, you're gonna steam in some wave and then you could cut those fibers down to the size if you want for your critter. So you might wanna think about and practice on an even thinner skewer if your sculpture is very small. So if you're making a poodle or something, then use, um, use like a kebab skewer so that you get your ringlets really tight. That would be my suggestion if you don't find the natural one that you're looking for. These are all awesome questions. Um, really appreciate them all. Um, and if you're watching the playback or if you're re-watching, post your comments down below so that we can see them. And if you make a fur bits or you start working on fur, even if it's a, a work in progress, I wanna invite you to share them in our Facebook group. And I'm just gonna pop that up here uh, if I can get over to it for you to see. Um, our Facebook group is just an amazing place where people share all week long, um, and I'll get out of the way, it's called Living Felt Friends. And it is a really active community of just amazing creative people. We always share all during the week. People share work in progress, people share their tips, people share their techniques. It's kind of a no holds barred community, super duper friendly. So join, that's on Facebook, it's called Living Felt Friends. And what we do is everyone just shares the projects in there. And then we often post um, people's projects in our newsletter if you're not subscribed to that. We'll include links to all this stuff in our description down below. Mostly we want to get you felting and get over that blank page syndrome and in this case your blank fur syndrome. Now I got to go home and work on Joey now that he's the fur has begun, y'all. <laughs> hey, the fairies are back because it's time to give away prizes. This is what we always like to do at the end of a show is give away something fun. So for everyone who contributed to the live conversation, thank you so much for doing that. And um, y'all going to give away some stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and go ahead. <laughs> Our prizes today, prize number oh, one. Let's get Holly in here. Oh, I'm hiding. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> Prize <tired>. number one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Prize number one is an MC1 studio pack. Woohoo! Nice. Mm -hmm. Prize number two. A merino top studio pack. Nice. Very nice. So what happens is you get to pick prize the merino uh, merino top or MC1 batting, whichever is your preference. We're going to call out three names right now. If you've never ordered anything with us, that means you're not in our database. So you can just email us at customer service or you can call us at, someone say the phone number. 877-665-5790. We're here Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. Saturdays from 10 to 4. You can call us and tell us which prize you like, and we'll get those sent out to you. So let's draw some names, y'all. Woo! Holly, how about you? Okay. Kathleen Manger Brown. Yay! Yay! Kathleen, woo! -hoo! Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Linda Saunders. Yay. Congratulations, yeah. Linda. And last but not least, we've got Margaret Matthews. Oh, all right. Thank you so much. Congratulations, everyone. And thank you all so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see what long fur you needle felt. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, Have a great day. Thank you.